So I'm here with uh, skipper Steve Yendel on the boat Scooby-Doo 2 and we've come out of Watchit Harbour and we are heading towards Bridgewater Bay. Uh, so Steve, what's the significance of, uh, of this buoy that we're, we're now approaching? OK, well, you've joined me on this glorious September afternoon to uh, basically to look at the approach to Burnham-on-Sea from the sea. And uh, we departed Watchit Harbour about an hour ago and we followed a course uh, straight up through the Lillstock firing range, which uh, wasn't live today. And uh, the first navigational um, aid I'm going to show you is the Gore Boy, and, uh, known as the Gore Bell. It's a red and white conical boy, and uh, it's the first navigational boy to mark the approach into Burnham-on-Sea. And visiting craft normally from this boy would adopt a position, a half, to three quarters of a mile south, i.e. back towards the land from this buoy. But basically, they're now in the navigable route into Burnham-on-Sea. So Steve, tell us where we are now. Okay, well, we've left the uh, Gore buoy behind us, approximately 2.8 miles. And the next navigational aid is the Burnham number one buoy, which we're approaching now. And this boy is sat right on top of drying sandbank. And in fact, twice a day, every day, this boy goes and sits on the sand over the low water period, okay? This, this is a port hand boy, which means red in color. And what that signifies is that for any approaching craft into Burnham-on-Sea, you leave it to your port side, i.e. that you're starboard of the boy or inland. And, uh, and that's the purpose of the buoy. It is the second navigational aid as we approach Burnham-on-Sea. And, uh, and there she is, red flashing light on the top. And in the distance there, you can see the two lighthouses on the land. And uh, the lower light is the land-based navigational aid that uh, we're now aiming for. And that light, that buoy, uh, sorry, the lower light has um, a light in it for nighttime navigation and the light sends out a beam of red light, a beam of white light, and a beam of green light. And the object of the exercise is when you're approaching in the dark and from the west, you keep the vessel in the white light, and that would be the navigable route of the channel. And clearly, if the channel moves, the problem with navigation aids, they're man-made and they, they become fixed structures. And uh, of course, they don't move, but your sandbanks do move. And uh, so what they can do with a the light, they can reposition the light as the sand moves down the years. And that's, and that's it. We left the, uh, we left the number one boy. We carried on our heading, uh, following into the Burnham lower light. As we got closer to the uh, closer to the land, the um, upper light and the lower light lined up into place, as you saw there, and we followed that for a very short uh, time. The final navigable mark is the number two buoy, which is just off on our starboard hand. It's a green conical buoy, and uh, that signifies now that we're at the point where we've got to make a turn, leaving that buoy to starboard on the approach, and we're going to make a turn and quite honest from here on in we just stay parallel with the shore running up through to the river parrot and the river brew and i'm sure many people have walked along that strip of sand and have looked at that white mark with the red line on it and thought whatever is that all about <laughs> but as you can see now as we're getting quite close in that red line is lined with the side of the church tower and uh, that is our route into burnham on sea so I'm coming off the 112, I'm leaving the church tower and the red line. And now we're running up the channel parallel with the land, there we are.